हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू गीकी संजय रिसेंटली वी स्टार्टेड अ एडब्ल्यू सीरीज एंड आई क्रिएटेड अ फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन दिस सीरीज हाउ टू क्रिएट ईसी टू इंस्टेंस एंड कनेक्ट विथ विंडोज यू कैन चेक लिंक इन डिस्क्रिप्शन टुडे वी आर क्रिएटिंग अनादर वीडियो इन सेम सीरीज We are going to learn how to set up a database on AWS in easy to follow steps. We will start by creating RDS on AWS and then connecting it to MySQL Workbench. Let's get started. So here we open, uh, we created a account in AWS, and now we will sign into console. So as you can see, we just log in in AWS, and we will search here RDS. So RDS means uh, Relational Database Services. With the help of this, we will create a database in this. So just we will click on this. So this uh, RDS panel is open. So you can see we have here the option database, which we can. Click here and create a database. And here we have option of create database. I already created one, and I will create another. So create database. Here we have two option to choose the database creation method. First, first is standard create, and second is easy create. So easy create is by default recommended practice best practices already configured. Okay. So if you want to use uh, the best best practices, you can use easy to create, and we have a standard create where we can customize our database based on our requirement. So my recommendation to use the standard create where we can customize as per our requirement. Then we have a multiple engine options here. You can see Aura, okay, and post Aura with MySQL, Aura with PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle. Microsoft SQL Server and IBM DB2. So here we are doing with the MySQL. So I will select the MySQL. Then we will go to the next. So here we have a addition MySQL community. So we will not do any changes here. You can see we have a engine versions 8.0.35. So whenever we selected MySQL, it is coming and we are keeping it to default. Now we will go to the next section templates. Uh, there we have a three options. One is a production, then dev and test. Third, we have a free tier. So in the production, what it will do whenever we are creating a production, it is by default available publicly. And whenever we are just making our website live, that time we will use this production. With the production, uh, we have multiple options. Then second, we have a dev test. Whenever we select the dev test, that time whenever we are doing the development, so it is used for the developers and for the testing purpose. So whenever our app is in development mode, that time we will create, uh, we will use it. But here we will keep the free tier. And whenever we are selecting production here, you can see we have a availability and durability. So it has the three things. First is a multi asset DB, DB cluster. So this DB cluster has the two standby uh, two standby DB instances. And whenever you are selecting this multi asset DB instance. So it has one. So it has a one standby DB instance, and third one is the single DB instance. So it do not have any standby. It only single one. So whenever you are selecting the free tier by default, it is the single one. Now we have a setting where we can write the alias instance name. So what is the instance name? So whenever we are creating this instance, so it is uh, used as an identifier for the uh, reasons. So we will write it down the name of the identifier. So we will write it down here RDS test identifier. Either we can do the instance RDS instance. Now next we have a credential settings. So credential setting we are keeping the admin by default the master username and in the credential management we have a manage in AWS secret manager and self manage so if i select the here so it will automatically manage by the aws so if we create this self manage uh, we can uh, create a custom password for it so as you can see we have a auto generated password whenever we are clicking here it will generate automatically a password and assign to it and if we want our password custom password then we just uh, Write it down here. So I'm keeping it simple. Now next instance configuration. So here we have a DB instance classes and we are not changing anything here. 
we have here breast classes so in the breast classes you can see we have a db3 micro and we have a db3 small we have a medium large and x large so why only uh, this why this is disabled because we have selected here you can see here we have selected free tire so the other is not available in the free tire so we have only this micro option and we have this uh, t4g micro so we are keeping this db t3 micro which has two cpus virtual cpus and one giga ram and the network uh, network 2085 mbps so we are keeping it uh, we just keep it default and now the next section we have a storage in the storage uh, we have a general purpose ssd gp2 gp3 and we have a different different option here so we are keeping the gp2 it is more than enough to us so just we are going for with the default and it will allocate it to the 20 gb memory and it, you can see here we have a storage auto scaling so whenever we are keeping it enable so it will assign to it will auto scale to this storage so if we are using the big database and we required additional space then we will keep it on and you can see here minimum it is 22 gb to 6144 gb so currently we are testing it so so just uh, disable it for now here we have a connectivity and here we have two options one is don't connect to an ec2 compute resource and second is connect to an ec2 compute resource so we are not connecting this with the ec2 resource because we will connect this with the local host so here we have a default vpc and if you want you can create a new vpc here so whenever you will create a new vpc you will go to the new window and you can create a vpc and come here and refresh it and select it whatever vpc you created same here whenever you are creating like db subnet group so we are keeping it default if you want you can create a new one and you can select it here here we have a access like public access so we have option yes and no so if you want to connect this with ec2 instance then you just keep it to no but if you want to connect with the third party like uh, mysql workbench or any other third party application so you just make it to yes so it will allow you to connect with other services so we are keeping it yes because we have to connect with the mysql workbench then next we have a vpc security group so here we have a choose existing and create new so we have a multiple options so what is this security group security group like a uh, we will create uh, some id a set of id and we will allow them to log in in our system like existing vpc default we have we are choosing it and we will go ahead now we have a availability zone so here you can see we have a no preference okay and we have a north 1a north 1b and north 1c so whenever we require to uh, like uh, backup okay so we will select this here and we can select this uh, one bit also here but we are not going with the backup so we will keep like a no preference here okay now you can next we have a rds proxy so we are not using any proxy so we just keep it simple here we will not add it and now we have a rds ca rca default so we have a different different type of uh, authority certificate here and we are just going with the default we, because we choose here default so we are keeping here also the default configurations now in the additional configuration we can see we have a database port 3306 so we will keep it default and we will not change it and we are not creating a tag here now database authentication we have a password authentication whenever we have to do with the password authentication we will keep it on and if you want more control on it and more secure way you can check on this password and i am database authentication either you can select this third one password and kerberos authentication so we are keeping this password authentication next we have a monitoring so whenever we click on the enable monitoring 
we have a gradualty and monitoring roles so we are not keeping monitoring here so we are making it off and we have a additional configuration here where we can write it down our database options okay before whatever name we have given that is the instance name now here we will give our database name so we are giving the name it to auth okay next we have a db parameter group mysql 8 we will keep it to 8 and here we are keeping to default now next we have a backup so we are not uh, keeping the backup so we will uncheck it and here it will uh, encrypt our database so we are not using an encryption so we also uncheck it for now and here you can see we have a log exports so with the help of this we can keep the log of audit errors general and so query log so if you want you can check it otherwise that is we can keep default uncheck and we have a maintenance here we can see enable auto minor version upgrade so we are not doing it right now so we are just uncheck it and we have a maintenance window so choose a window or no preference so we are not maintaining anything so uh, we are not doing maintenance this is only testing purpose so we are just keeping this no preference right now if you want to research on this just go to official doc of aws and just do it and play with this options with you so as you can see whenever we have selected all the options we have a estimated monthly cost here but we do not have to worry about it because we choose a free tier so it will not cost anything to us so now we have created and we have selected and set up all the options required options now at the end just click on here created database so it will create our database now it's uh, there is some error the master password must be eight character so i will add one more so i will click here and create database so it will take some time to create so as you can see we have some advertisement uh done by the aws so just simply close it and now it is creating a database so now our uh, database is successfully created and here you can see it is available now rds instance so now i open my sql workbench and we are here now we will click on this plus button and create a connection so the setup new connection is here so first i write it down the name of the connection so this connection name should be aws auth and uh, we will not change this tcp ip and in the host name this is the local host name i will copy the host name from the aws and paste it here so here you can see uh, we have our rds instance just click on this and it will open and here we have a endpoint and port we will just copy this endpoint name and we will paste it here on the host name we will not change this port 3306 because we already used in the aws database and here in the username we will change admin and set in password here we will type admin admin whatever we set in the aws database and the schema name is auth and i will test this connection by clicking on this so again i will put the password admin admin okay and okay so now you can see uh, connection is successfully established with the aws and here we have this so i just open it so here we open our database so this database is connected to the aws whatever we have created just now so as you can see we do not have any table right now and i will test this with one of my application and we will see if the table is created here or not uh, we are inside of the intellij idea and i have created one authentication app here and i just trying to connect with that database okay so here i will write it down the same uh, url we are using there so here i have a endpoint i will copy this endpoint 
the URL here and I just keep the username admin and I will just write it down the password admin admin which I used at the time of creation of the MySQL and I will try to uh, play this okay I just click on play and we will see if it is success then we will see the table in our database as you can see we run this application and now this tomcat is started on port 8080 and we will see in our database if everything is goes well then the all table is created in the database now we have in mysql workbench and here you can see we have a arc we will just refresh it and we will see as you can see here table uh, this table are created uh, like authentication authorization and client role token you can see this all uh, models i already created here role token users and this all uh, tables is created there so we successfully created mysql database in the aws and then we just connected it with the mysql workbench the url there and the username password and connected this database with that application whenever we run that application that application created the table application created the table with the help of the spring boot jpa so that's it for today's video if you learn something from this video please like share and subscribe and follow me on instagram you also can visit my website geekysanjay.com for my written notes and so on Thank you.